And this example, the European Space Agency actually used this um, a functional, it's not a prototype, it is a production one that was actually used as part of the liquid rocket engine. And that was completely 3D printed uh, and used. Um, and here are the spec on that. You can Google it and you can find that. I think India is ready and prime, it, it is in its prime state to get it to the next level. And But our task from uh, schools and colleges in India is to promote by using uh, a functional, uh, a, a couple of 3D printers that, that you can build it inexpensively and say college students can help high school students. High school students can help middle school students and elementary level school students. And similarly, the professors uh, and expert faculty members of universities can help the, you know, their affiliated college um, faculty members, and they can interact with inspiring and introducing, uh, giving in the form of giving workshops, etc., to the high school, middle school, and elementary school teachers. So from ground up in India, we can build innovation culture and and using a hands-on applied uh, STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math type of a learning model. I hope it makes sense and it is very much doable, but the only thing is that Indian uh, institutions have to support it. I think we are ready and the government, I believe is trying to do everything. And let's talk about another vertical market uh, where biomedical devices, uh, say I, I was in San Jose in the Bay Area, um, there is a specialized company uh, that uses, say if when, you're, when you are a uh, medical student and you are, um, uh, you are going to the anatomy lab and um, the actual dead bodies, cadavers, that are being opened and it smells really bad when you go into an anatomy lab and uh, you actually get to touch and feel um, and, and put that body back and you become a doctor. What about that? You know, so that at one point you actually need that, but before that you can actually use a 3D printer to, um, Create a, create a model of say your heart or a specific type of valves in the different sections of your heart. And uh, then you can specifically zoom in and focus and uh, highlight the different parts so that it is easier for them to learn. And so you can make medical dummies, medical dummy body, body parts, uh, or even a functional body part uh, that are that can be created and currently lot as you probably have read that in the newspapers and science journals and magazines these are actively in the works that are being done um what about spacesuit spacesuit uh, is extraordinarily expensive uh, it, it used to be very difficult to manufacture, but these days with the 3D printers help, uh, we are able to make custom measure that astronaut and then print all the necessary parts and weave them together and create that custom suit. Um, there's a case study, there's a company called a bunch of uh, MIT students got together and they uh, formed a company called Desktop Metal. Um, they are using a special technology where uh, similar to FDM and they are able to print one of parts uh, with enormous time uh, saving uh, benefits and material strength benefits. Uh, in every aspect, they're able to do that. So 
um, I told you um, how innovation that seemingly sounds silly, um, but the sillier the project is, uh, not very serious. Oh, you know, like a mechanical engineering professor in India would say, oh, just focus on this special electrical uh, car engine or motor that you wanted to uh, do. And they will directly go in there and work all of the algorithms and the logic behind it, but without ever touching that, um, actually making a prototype in the, you know, first off. But whereas in the US, the culture is, I told you at one point, is a garage based culture. So you first start with uh, failing, making things and failing a uh, few times so that from the beginning you're focusing on quality and you are uh your your success in making innovative products are uh higher or high um so there was one project um that was done in mit that i got to see uh a student how many you know many times let me go let me go to a video um because right now I'm just I'm I'm talking to the screen, uh, hoping that I'm actually being um, audible, etc. So, um, the so the the problem in that project, that innovation project, was um, uh, many a times you, you feel like screaming, right? Um, but you cannot scream. Uh, because it is offensive to others. Maybe you are in a public place. Sometimes now, even with the COVID, um, you you try to control your sneezing or coughing uh, or blowing your nose, uh, etc. Um, so this girl in MIT Media Lab um, wanted to create a screaming machine. And what is that screaming machine? Uh, she thought the problem, like I was describing, whenever you feel like screaming, uh, you should be able to capture the scream in a bag and then uh, let it out uh, at an opportune time and place. So she created a kangaroo-like pouch. Um, thank you, Dr. Ballamurgan. Um so, so you're like a kangaroo, the animal from Australia, she created a custom pouch and she used 3D printers to make a lot of the parts for that and also used Arduino, um, the open source hardware, and uh, started uh, the project. And whenever she felt like screaming, she'll open the bag and she'll scream into it um and then uh close it and it had that all of the mechanisms in that product then later whenever she felt whenever she found the right time and the space where it's not going to bother others and she'll push a button and it'll open and the scream will come out eha whatever scream that is that the screaming machine that's what it does now does it have a commercial value uh, but it has a cool factor. It is fun. Um, just imagine somebody captured somebody's scream and then it uh, lets it out uh, and you're able to control the time and space for that. And the amount of science and technology engineering uh, and, uh, and the promotion of innovation that happens in that project is huge. Okay. Um, so that being said, I would like to open up the a presentation for questions and answers. You can either type in your question. Um, or you can ask, unmute yourself and ask the question and somebody can moderate that. So, so uh, 
how can we the, the effectiveness of the, the uh, normal DM filters available in Amazon and Flipkart is there? Whether they are useful to purchase and to make as a teaching material? Um, so I believe your question is when you buy a printer from Amazon, right? A uh, typical FDM printer from Amazon. Uh, and I heard that clearly. And after that, what happened? Uh, can we use it as for a teaching purpose? That, that is to teach how to make the 3D printing and 3D printing process to graduate students? Yes. My recommendation is yes. Start with that. Um, and I'm sure it's going to be made in China for sure. Um, because they make everything for the whole world, even now. Um, start with that, get a couple of 3D printers. And then, I, I'm an Indian, I love India. And, uh, and what I would like to do is what the Chinese did always. What did they do? Um, they took pictures and then they recreated everything. And uh, now, they are in a place where they don't have to take pictures and they have started making high quality products. So uh, we missed that boat. I mean, we tried at one point in Mumbai and uh, like when I was uh, 20, 25 years old, it happened uh, actively, uh, but the duplicate market like Burma Bazaar and all those places got inundated. Uh, but right now it is our turn. Yes, buy a couple of 3D printers. Like I said earlier, and then start making, let your students make them. In fact, you just buy two and make them disassemble one and take it apart and then make them put it back. And uh, then these guys will be ready to make their own 3D printer uh, using local materials. And I have seen it. I have seen your college students do that. And I was very proud of uh, calling, recalling that experience. Um, and that is that is one of the things that we did, and we when we hired the interns from your school. Uh, next one, sir. From, from, from my side. Yeah. Uh, what are the, the research opportunities in three D printing, especially polymer three D printing? Yes, it is saturated, I think. Is there any opportunity to do research further in this polymer based credibility? Uh, Dr. Balmurgan, the voice is kind of mumbled. Um, uh, can, you, can you hear that? Yeah, if you can speak up, maybe. Okay. Speak up I will again. I will yeah. again ask. Yeah. So what are the research opportunities in polymer based credibility? Because most of them are tried, I think it is not fully really established. Is there any opportunity to explore more, that is to do research in polymer based productivity? Um, I actually knew a professor uh, that I worked with in the SRM uh, University, and his focus was on um, optimizing uh, the polymer technology for 3D printing. Uh, and he was also working with the students uh, using recycled like plastic waste products everywhere, collecting them and then uh, re, uh, repurposing and making um, 3D printable like pellets first and then later the pellets will become uh, extrudable uh, wire spools and that was the research that he was doing. So the my my answer is yes. What I would do, uh, again, I, that, that is a nice project. Uh, since we are still using a lot of plastic and waste and stuff, um, and I would uh, strongly encourage uh, having a bunch of students do research uh, and have a competition around that. I can even support such competition through some sort of a, an award at the end for good ideas uh, or good, good, uh, good, um, say, prototypes that they can make. So then they want to do research in the polymer 3D printing. What could be the range of the machine to be purchased or procured? 
Yeah, um, I, I'm sure we can have a separate conversation around this. I can even connect um, because I'm I'm not a I, I don't go into I'm at the managerial level. Um, so I, I'm, not, I'm not able to go into the lot of technical aspects of it. Thank you. Uh, anybody else? One question. Yeah, yeah. Hi. I have no one down. Yes. Hello. Is it audible, yes. sir? Yes, uh, Surya Verman, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, I, yeah, for a student community, which type of uh, printer you prefer most, sir? Whether uh, FDM based or SLA based, which one you prefer uh, for a student community? Please. Um, start start with um, either one will work. Uh, we we have tried um, in the beginning. Um, it's both are you know similar approach similar similar concept so um it'll work but fdm is um less expensive right uh sla is a little bit more expensive what is the what is the current market availability there i i believe creality printers are the ones that are uh, being flooded into the Indian market, right? Yeah, yeah, most widely FDM is available in everywhere, but uh, other type of data method or deposit updating type of data. Yeah, yeah. I, I, so if you don't have any, I will put priority one. Uh, your your first um, will be FDM, and then go for um, a stereo approach. Um, where it uh, it uh, cures uh, liquid polymer in a tub and then extrudes from that um, because it's uh, it's more expensive. Obviously, the technology is more involved in that. Um, we have worked with a local university um, here on that, uh, but FDM is my first step that I would do if I were you. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? All right. Um, so, Dr. Balamurgan, if uh, there are no other questions, I wanted to thank all of you um, for this opportunity to uh share my experience and knowledge um, sir i have a question sir yeah yes sir is there any chance to print complaint mechanism material by using 3d printer sir uh what me mechanism are you talking about complaint mechanism sir complaint can you give me an example uh example before uh, at the starting of this presentation you have video on playing sir you played a video that uh, hand movement video oh yeah yeah yes yeah it's also an example of complaint mechanism sir okay i, I just i'm not sure that word um that you are talking about um, okay, yeah so there is a lab um in uh, in New Hampshire in the U.S., um, they focus on, um, are you talking about complex structures? So, uh, it's a flexible mechanism, sir. Compliant mechanism is also otherwise called flexible mechanism. Flex, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so you have to, you have to, um, you have to print, uh, modular parts and then you have 
stitch them together. Um, it's a little bit laborious. So what we try, you know, you're a humanoid robot, right? Uh, yes. Robot can walk. Uh, we ha we have actually done that. Uh, it'll be unwieldy. Uh, in fact, we took a we we took a Hollywood actor and then uh, recreate that actor. Um, you know, facial structures and uh, all of that. But very very involved. Very very involved. Um, to do that, but it you have to mod, modularize every segment and then put them together through some sort of joints uh, assembly system. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, no, 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 the parties on this have any permission to speak with you. Uh, sorry, sorry. What was the what was the comment there? Uh, comment or question? Uh, Max Care Euro, can you please speak? Can you yes, sir. Please? If possible, uh, I can answer that question, sir. Sure. Yeah. Ask okay. question, sir. Sir, uh, yeah. actually, the complaint mechanism uh, is a is a, it comes under the topic design for additive manufacturing. Okay. Parts for uh, in the process of additive manufacturing, this process helps uh, helps us to uh, create mechanism inbuilt in the uh, in the design itself. For an example, we got a cloth clip, cloth clip components majorly uh, the top part mm -hmm. and the bottom part and the metal spring. So by complying mechanism, we can create an internal stress. Uh, so that we can simply print a component and it can work like a cloth clip. And yeah. uh, this mechanism is used in uh, satellite uh, in satellite navigation system, where uh, we have nozzles, right? So in order yeah. to reduce the amount of electricity that we use in satellites, we can implement uh, this compliant mechanism, and with one motor, we can control the x and y direction of the motor. So yeah, yeah. this is a, this is a very good uh, work. Uh, uh, I I couldn't remember the university which does this, but uh, in design for additive manufacturing, this topic is a very interesting topic that we can develop a lot of competence uh, yeah, in this uh, regard. And yeah, uh, when, we use a, uh, when we use the printer, we got the pass pass function also, where we can add another uh, infill. So that uh, we can make those uh, parts also uh, work in a better way. Beautiful example that you gave. Yes. Okay, so George Mason, Mason University, uh, for example, the muscle in your heart, um, they they are specialized in it. biomechanics. It is used there quite a bit, but the challenge is the material that you use for that. They are even specifically culturing those tissues and then those are tissue cultured and um, and and replicated in the lab and then that gets extruded to make that muscle and they are uh, they are um, testing those in in the medical world and biomechanically especially biomechanical and thanks for adding that information now it makes sense to me yeah <clears throat> sir, I am Sandosh yeah. Kumar, sir. I have, I have one doubt, sir. Sure. Sir, uh, which type of 3D printers are used to uh, build a human organ, sir? Is possible? Again, it is at the R&D level. Like I said, George Mason University, they are working okay, with pigs, uh, pig's heart. Um, and what they are taking uh, those tissues from the uh, heart of the pig and they are tissue culturing it and then growing it in the lab and then they are using that with special uh, bio mimicking materials uh, to do that very it's very it, it's at uh, inf infant stage right now that is my understanding um, but it is custom the, the material itself is custom manufactured in order to make that
ओके सर थैंक यू सर सर विच टाइप ऑफ थ्री डी प्रिंटर्स आर यूज सर again those 3d printers are specialized 3d printers okay. uh, it okay, wouldn't sir. fit into any of these categories that we are talking about currently see 3d printer technology has been there for a long time so the the patent uh, licensing requirement by um, 3d systems that is the main company that owned it that expired and then it opened up the whole world of um everybody trying that and then open source folks got in and popularized it so but a lot of secret work that is happening and they are not being published and they are not even available on the internet uh because these funds are uh funded by pharmaceutical companies and you you know uh american pharmaceutical companies are they are closely guarded it's a multi a multi trillion dollar industry across the world and they are betting on making these specialized 3d printers i'll tell you hp that makes your paper printers and they are putting in um uh, billions of dollars into making 3d printers becoming a mass produced uh, consumer consumed type of technology and they are they are going to sell uh little cartridges where you can actually the the printers will behave like regular paper printer so but they are not telling they are not publishing until it becomes a readily commercially viable product but we know that they are doing that research as we speak so thank you sir thank you very much sir very valuable yeah. information you have given thank you for giving this uh, very informative uh, presentation for us yes thank you sir ah ganesh balamurgan this is manimaran yes sir hello no tell me tell me ah this is manimaran here sir is it possible to print uh, biodegradable plastics uh, product without uh, the in an economical way um so the one that uh, say the us schools are very much uh, into um uh is health right so the bioplastic material is uh, what which one is that sla uh, the material that i showed um all these print uh, materials that we use here let me bring that so this uses uh, the material um that is uh, an acid from a uh, plant it is an acid based um material and it so it, this is post environment air conditions um when it is printing it doesn't cause any bad smell uh does not create any fume uh no health issues with this so when we have students come to the lab and learn uh, and print uh, we are only allowed to use this uh, any other type of um, uh, anything uh, other like other ma other materials um, you're not allowed okay thank you thank you thank you sir yeah all right very good Yes, yes, yes. Sir, I have one more question. Sir. This is Vikram Sharma, sir. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Will a 3D printed object superior in strength when compared with the conventional products, sir? What about in strength perspective, sir? Um, so that is a lot of people are doing their PhD level research on uh, tensile strength, uh, uh, malleability, ductility, uh, those elemental analysis type of things, and that is where. every university major universities are focusing on material science material science that will uh research and develop uh the materials that are going to give optimal strength needed in specific temperature right for example if you are putting a 3d printed material on the space station on the space station on one side it is facing one side of the 
um, uh, the space that is uh, about minus 200 degrees Celsius. On the other side, it is um, plus uh, 200 degrees Celsius. So one side it is almost uh, you know melting, the other side it is freezing, and it, the material has to withstand extreme uh, such variation, temperature variation. So that is the reason material science is one uh, department where a lot of active research uh, is happening in the US and funding is also getting uh, pouring in. HP, like I said, how you can make 3D printers that can be mass consumable, uh, consumer friendly, like regular paper printer, and where is the money being spent on the research? Material science. So you take the elements in the periodic table and make a concoction. Remember, we were we were making uh, uh, trying to make gold out of a bunch of uh, plants. Um, medicine and the Madri, uh, the material science is uh, hot right now and um, if I had the money I would definitely go to that but it is an expensive thing uh, private companies uh, e even very big companies um, you know in India cannot afford it. Uh, it, it it has to be a frontier research uh, frontier research means uh, start with theoretical fundamentals, understand um, the elements in the periodic table, and then make how to make a concoction, um, and then uh, how material science R&D will be able to uh, filter that out and, and say, oh, you make this these three elements in this formula, then you can print uh, a, a specific uh, component that'll work in X, Y, and Z temperature condition and variability. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And I have one more question regarding actually uh, business point of view. Yeah. And what is the scope of uh, doing business with the uh, 3D printer? Is this the right time to uh, invest on uh, 3D printers to do certain business in Indian uh, perspective, Indian market? Yeah, I was actually thinking about making, uh, you know, you have uh, malls, uh, shopping, big uh, supermarket. Uh, is that uh, in Chennai? There's a place called the Phoenix Mall. Um, and Pondicherry, there are some big multi level places. Um, and now there is a consumer market for, um, you know, Mehendi, the henna, right? Henna? Yes, uh, yes. Mardani. Yes. yes. Um, so you, I would like to make a 3D printer that'll apply Mardani in beautiful designs. Um, they can they can uh, they can draw their own picture what type of thing that they want. Right now they had to go to uh, what is that place? Um, um, uh, the the popular uh, uh, ladies only places are there. Women go there and get their mehendi done on their palms and on their feet. Uh, but 3D printer can do it. They just have to go, um, you know, like they go to a salon um, and you get your makeup done. And similarly, the 3D printer can do that. So uh, Indian market is ready for that. Um, some of your students should start doing all of these, including your dosa printer. Like we have your pancake printer. I think... Uh, it, it'll it'll become a nice uh, micro loan. You know, banks can provide loans, um, but you have to just standardize it and then provide ongoing technical support because these things are const they need constant maintenance because it works with temperature, it melts stuff, and then uh, it, the, especially the nozzle gets dirty and that needs to be maintained. Like I said before, so business opportunities are plenty to me. You so it's it's not you're not going to have a precursor, right? I mean, precursor meaning uh, you're not going to be uh, already seeing an existing business. You're going to create a new business and then create that new market. So you will be a trailblazer and pioneer in doing that. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank yeah, you. and it is not expensive either to do that. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, everybody. Thank I enjoyed you. talking to all of you.
Thank you, sir. You should be also. Thank you. Any more music? Ma, okay. So, thank um, you, Mr. Yeah. yeah. So then I will disconnect and thanks everybody. Yeah, one more minute. Thank you, Mr. Kumar Ramjam, for having spent your precious time with us this day. Especially the time difference between US and India. Yes. If you are an uh, early to bed uh, timer, you would have gone, gone for sleep by this time. So, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for having spared your time, precious time for us. Your lecture was fully informative and educative. And no doubt that all the participants would have been benefited. Thank you once thank again. You. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you.